What was the red flag there? Him sending me a dick pic and saying it was accidental. <laughs> okay, no, 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 sorry. Oh, I remember <laughs> that. Who's in the mood for love? You look like you are. My sweater is. <laughs> yes. We are. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> Sorry, I actually love love, so let's go. You do. I do love Mel it. loves love. Since we are in this phase of prepping Janet to get mm-hmm. back onto the dating scene, if you haven't listened to episode 261, that is an episode where we talked about how to flirt, which is the foundation of romance, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. For today's episode, we wanted to talk about how now that we are women in our 30s, we kind of have a better sense of who we are, what we bring to the table, what we expect our partners to bring to the table as well, what we don't want to compromise on in terms of values, in our partner and in love. So we're going to talk about that today. Looking back at our dating experiences, it's interesting to see how much um, what we looked for in love has evolved. Mm -hmm. Funny how a few years can just change a whole perspective. Today we're talking about deal makers, deal breakers, and those kind of questionable beige flags to those red flags. Let's get into it. Oh my God, I just did this. (laughs) Let's get into it. Okay. So let's start from the top. You're on a first date. Mm -hmm. What are red flags on a first date versus deal breakers? Actually, do we feel like those are the same thing? Red flags and deal breakers? How are they different? I feel like red flags are more like it it, it creates like an alert in your brain. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I got to be on the lookout for this. Deal breaker is like an automatic no. Yeah, mm. I think I used to think they were one and the same, but mm. now that I, now that we're thinking about this episode, they're definitely different. I feel mm. like red flags are more of a red flag where <laughs> it's like there is still potential, right? There's still mm. potential to turn it into a green flag. They are a work in progress, mm. right? But a deal breaker, right? Deal breaker, deal yeah. maker, deal breaker is there's like an ultimatum. Full stop. Mm. There's mm. we're not moving forward in this relationship. Got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, based on like a little bit of, I guess, like research that we did, a red flag is known to be just like a warning sign. Mm. So like you're saying, it's not like a total, total like, a, you know, closing the door on that individual or on that like characteristic, um, but it's a signal. So it kind of makes you pause a little bit and be like, mm, that could be something worse, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a stop sign versus yes. like a construction site. You have to take a detour. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes. That's a good analogy. Okay. <laughs> versus a deal breaker, it is a non-negotiable. So it's mm. like a strong, strong disqualifier. They are the long-term qualities, behaviors, qualities, behaviors, and values that someone displays that do not align with your own views or your values or your long-term desire. Mm. So that's the construction site, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. So I have a list of red flags here that one of the producers of our show, Hemi, she kind of put this together and she found this to be fun and relatable. So as I'm reading through it, um, let me know, you ladies, if you've ever experienced any of these before. And also for listeners out there, let us know if you also consider these red flags or if they're like green flags for you or Mm. even deal breakers for you. I think Mm -hmm. everyone has a different standard when it comes to these things, right? So first one is lack of communication. For example, if they are always late and they don't give you a heads up. That's for sure like a red flag. Yeah. Really? Okay, so I've kind of shifted on this because I think nowadays like sometimes depending on the setting, people are like rushing from one thing to another. Like something might come up and I just envision someone like in their car and maybe there was an accident that happened Mm. or like a detour or something and um, they maybe are not in the mindset to like communicate that time. But if they show up and they explain to you, like Mm -hmm. if they act like nothing happened, then that's a – then that's like a – a red flag. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I right? think, yeah, this example says that they don't they don't give you a heads up. So you're oh, saying that even if they show up late, but they, they explain it to you, you're yeah, like, okay yeah. with it. Yeah, I if think, I'm not if I'm not in the loop in the beginning or like while it's happening or even before, yes. like, that's okay. Loop I would agree with that. But I think if this were a consistent thing, yeah. Yeah. then I'd be like, why, one, you being always late, I feel like that is not respecting people's time. Mm-hmm. And then two, mm-hmm. there's a level of like frazzledness with what is going on in your life. And especially if you're not, telling me why Mm. beforehand or you know or if it's always after i could see that being a thing where i just feel like in terms of communication it's going to be tough yeah yeah, in a longer term relationship i agree i think for me i read that example as a continuous behavior Mm. i think early stages of dating usually when you run into issue like hey sorry i got really traffic i feel Mm -hmm. like communication is actually much higher Mm. all the dates i've been like i'm sorry i ran into traffic or like i'm Mm. running a little bit behind so there's always that so your person's not just kind of like waiting Mm -hmm. i think it's a level of respect Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah i think 
It's a red if flag. If it were to happen consistently, consistently, yes. then yeah, red flag. Okay, there's a lot more here. Okay, okay. So let's continue going yeah. through. Okay. All right. When the guy orders for you, and I'm going to say guy for all of these examples, right? But this can definitely apply to women as well. But when the guy orders for you without asking what you want. Mm. Mm. Oh. I, Unless they know me, I'd be like, okay with it. And they're like, oh, definitely get the salmon for Helen. I'm going to order ahead of time. If she's running late, I got her. Like, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. But if you were just like, she'll have the pasta. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm also envisioning sometimes like you go and it's like ordering for the table, table. or we're doing small bites. Uh, okay. I kind of... I kind of don't mind if someone is like, oh, let's get this spread. And then it's like, if I wanted something more, I can just add to that mm-hmm. or you can localize. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. To be honest, I, I, maybe I'm basing these examples off my personal experience. I actually never ha- ran into that issue. I don't think I Like, no either. one has ever ordered for yeah, me. Yeah, I don't think I've had that ha- actually happen okay. personally. Yeah. But mm. red, red-ish flag? Yeah, it could be. Okay. As a foodie? No. Yeah, of course it's a red mm. flag. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, do you know what I like? Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. if they actually picked something correctly, it'd be kind of nice. But if not, mm-hmm. then it would be a detriment yeah. to the relationship. I think if it's a place this person likes to go to and he's like, I know the specials, go mm-hmm. ahead. Mm-hmm. But usually like we go to new places. So I'm like, let me kind of explore the menu too. All right. Mm-hmm. So this is a light red flag. What's a light red flag? a pink flag? flag maybe. That's what light red is. <laughs> Hello everyone, Helen here. As some of you may know, my two-year-old started going to daycare, and perhaps you can hear it in my voice already, but we are all a little under the weather in this household. Something I've started to do to help provide the full body nourishment my baby needs is by giving him vitamins. Now, I'm not talking about the typical kid's vitamins that are basically sugar traps. I'm giving him Haya, a pediatrician-approved chewable vitamin with zero sugar yet tastes amazing. These vitamins fill in those common gaps in modern children's diets and is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and so much more. Now here's the exciting part for all of you parents out there. We've teamed up with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash ABG. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash ABG and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Next one. Disregards your boundaries. So here are a few examples, okay? He picks a location that makes you feel uncomfortable or Mm. unsafe. For example, his Mm. house as a first date, somewhere sketchy. If he tries to get physical or affectionate too fast for your liking, tries to get you to drink more than you want to. Mm. If he is overly affectionate from the beginning, so love bombing, which Mm. is considered a manipulative tactic. Um, Any of those you ladies have experienced? I have. Which one? I was got to go on. I was going. I was on a guy, and he said for the first date, "Do you want to come over?" And I was like, "What?" Like I just feel like it wasn't appropriate, Mm. and so. I actually had to tell him, like, I don't really feel comfortable choosing your place as a first date. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then it, it, it was also really, like, he's also another red flag. He was really weird with communication. So it was kind of combined with, like, lack of communi- mm-hmm. communication. And then last minute throwing his place as a first date mm-hmm. spot. Is this someone yeah. you met online? Yes. Or is, oh, okay, so you never had a face, face-to-face. Zero. Oof. So that's also another layer to it. Yeah. But the caveat was when he explained to me and I totally understand he was like it was still like COVID era like where it's like Mm. you don't want to go to public spaces with a lot of crowds and so he's like oh I just suggested that because it's like the tail end of it where Mm. it was kind of like people back then when they were dating it's like do we want to you be so extra cautious Mm -hmm. so I was like okay gave him the benefit of the doubt but I think that combined with the lack of communication and it just felt like no intentional thought to this date Mm -hmm. I was like I don't know how I feel about this did you go on the date I ended up choosing a spot oh okay oh you suggested something different I I suggested somewhere else okay but that was definitely a red flag moment for me yeah Mm, I was like I think I texted you both I was like oh this is weird yeah Yeah. how about for you Janet I don't even remember how the conversation went but we just ended up somehow we were talking about like um like I think him making dinner and it was like why don't you come over and then we'll like make dinner together Mm. um and I thought I was like okay that's like then it's like an, it's and it's also like um it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more relaxed right like mm. you, I think you can get to like know each other oh here's what it was the conversation was around understanding how like um two people interact if you have to cook together mm-hmm. and so I think that was the conversation that went into then we're like oh okay we'll decide on things to cook and then I think like he bought some things I bought some things and then I showed up at his house because he had the kitchen I think probably or we for whatever reason it was like location or mm. like he had the proper like setting. Um, but I do remember texting with Helen. She's like, Janet, you're going to his house? I'm like, yeah, we're going to go like make food and make dinner. She's like, 
you're going to his house. He lives alone. And this is the first date. I was like, oh, I guess when I read it that way. Hey, it's not a red flag for Janet. It's not a I red was, flag. Yeah, I kind of, I, I was, uh, um, I, I felt safe. What was this? I, I, I remember, I remember yeah, this. Yeah, this is. I was like, are you okay? Are you safe? Are yeah, you in downtown? Yeah, yeah. Can I like <laughs> run over if I need to? Yeah. yeah. This was, uh, oh my God, when was this? This you was, said, was this? Um, she said your 20s, dolls. Like, did we know you in your 20s? Or maybe my early, early 30s. Mm. I think it was before, before downtown. I don't or maybe remember, it was her, right. but. I don't quite remember either, but was it was this, a was long this time ago. The Lunar New York guy? <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, this is like way, way before. Okay, way, way before. Sorry. Inside. This was like. <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I remember you doing this, though, and I was just like making sure you were safe. But I feel like you had a good time from that date. It was It was fine. I had a good time. It was a, he was problematic in other ways later. Uh, so, what but was the red flag there? The, the if, red, if it wasn't the, the dinner. Oh, him sending me a dick pic and saying it was accidental. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Sorry. Oh, I remember <laughs> that. It wasn't quite a dick pic. It was a photo of him. In, it was a mirror what do you mean selfie. It might not be your dick pic. Okay, okay, a dick, sorry, sorry, a dick, sorry, pic. dick pic versus a mirror it. selfie is very different. Okay, well here, but it was a mirror selfie with a very clear focus. It wasn't like he wasn't like naked. he like touched it to like focus on it. <laughs> no, but it was like it was <laughs> it was engorged. It was engorged. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. And I remember, I but remember like clothes. Like there was clothes, a cloth on clothes. It. Okay. So he was trying to be suggestive. I think. I see. But I remember getting that text and being like whoa, dude, this is not, like, I'm not into this, blah, blah, blah. And then he kind of, and this could have been real. It could have been a miss. He maybe sent the message to the wrong person. But mm. in reading it, it sounded like he was backtracking and being like, oh, I don't know. Sorry, this wasn't what I, I intended. And I was just like, Then who was no. he sending that to? Yeah. I mean, that was okay because we weren't, we, we I think we had gone on, like, w- well, I, like, one date and then, like, we're kind of just, like, texting back and forth. <laughs> and after that one day, I, I told him, like, I'm not really interested in that way. And I think he was confused because we had a good time on the date. But if I'm on the date like or if we're hanging out or in that like event i'm gonna make it a good time because i'm committed right but i think he's like oh because you were having a good time that means you're into this right Mm -hmm. i was like no i had a great time with you i don't i don't see like romantic future it kind of put him off a little bit and i and then he kept messaging me and then that that image came up and i was like whoa wait Mm -hmm. i feel like i just missed on this whole freaking story i didn't know this existed (laughs) i forgot that this existed i don't think i don't think you showed me that picture (laughs) <laughs> Which you, you want yeah, to yeah. No, 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 no. Which I'm glad you didn't. But yeah, I remember yeah. you telling me that. Yeah, that Oof. would be a red flag, an That's unwanted good, mirror selfie slash. Oh, for sure, epic. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. God about these stories. <laughs> Whoa, I never knew that one existed. <laughs> this is what you don't do. Okay, yeah, don't do those things. Did you know that we're eating and drinking roughly a credit card's worth of plastic a week? The products that we're using every day are ultimately contaminating our water supply, generating hundreds of microplastics that we end up ingesting. As much as I can, I try to lead a cleaner, greener lifestyle. One of the key ways to do this is by reducing plastic use. Blue Land set out to eliminate the need for single-use plastic in the products that we reach for the most. How are they doing this? It's pretty simple, but pretty genius. They send you their reusable cleaning product containers along with tablets. All you have to do is add water into the bottles, drop in a tablet, and voila! No need to grab bulky and heavy cleaning supplies on your grocery runs, which I personally really appreciate. Refills also start at just $2.25, and you can even set up a subscription or buy in bulk for additional savings. This is such a great model. Clean ingredients, less waste, smart design, simple packaging. I love it. They have hand soap, bathroom and multi-surface cleaners, laundry tablets, toilet bowl cleaner tablets, and more. The toilet bowl tablets are my personal favorite. They have a nice, light citrusy scent versus that really harsh chemical smell you get from traditional toilet bowl cleaners. Blueland has a special offer just for our listeners. Right now, get 15% off your first order by going to blueland.com slash ABG. You won't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash ABG for 15% off. That's blueland.com slash ABG to get 15% off. Okay, here's another one. Okay. His attention is elsewhere. Like he's checking his phone constantly or looking around or scoping people out. I'm just going to keep going, okay? Mm-hmm. And then you can stop me whenever. He talks about himself the whole time, mm-hmm. how he treats others He's if he's rude to the waiter, talking too much about an ex, calling her crazy, mm-hmm. makes comments about your appearance that aren't complimentary. Mm. Mm. Those are for sure red flags. Yeah. yeah. I think they're all red flags. Yeah. One of the experiences I've had is I went to... I think it was we went to I went to a bar with this dude for a first date and he was trying to call the bartender over and um it the bartender wasn't like responding to him or something and then he kind of like looked over and he's like that guy's such a dick and I was like 
Mm, Whoa, yeah. just because mm, like yeah, I felt like that was such a you're jumping to such a major conclusion and you're like accusing someone mm-hmm. of this thing just because you couldn't get his attention, perhaps. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Or it just I, I would have been a, like, Oh, you're jumping, you're coming you're jumping it like you're and judging so fast. Judging, not only judging so, I guess that wrong, it's it wasn't that he was directly rude to the bartender's face, but I felt that to be rude behavior around like Yeah. 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 So that was like for me a bit of a red flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think one of the ones that I mentioned, like when someone kind of it says like what makes makes fun of your looks. I could oh. see that a little bit of a if it was more on a in a playful sense. Yeah, I could yeah. see that being okay. Like it's kind Agreed. of like you're teasing one another, and it could be yeah. a little flirty. But if that's persistent and it's mm-hmm. you know kind of extreme, or the playfulness is taken out of it, then that could lead towards a red flag. But yeah. that one I think is a it's a little pinky for me, especially when yeah, you're yeah. at the beginning and you're kind of just like, oh, your glasses are so cute, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, it's a playful. Like it can be playful. Is that how it. I flirt? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I don't know. I've again, like we haven't really seen you flirt like that before. <laughs> Gotta be a terrible flirt. Another, yeah. So talking about their ex, I think here's the thing. What I've learned is like if someone is talking a lot about the other person and they say extreme things like they're crazy or this happened or whatever, it takes two to tango. Is mm. the you know like you never? I don't want to judge what happens, but generally, if there's a if. For example, you're saying I've I've dated a lot of girls who were too clingy. It's like what is happening in the dynamic that mm-hmm. could cause the clinginess? Like you are part, you are fifty percent of what's happening there. So mm-hmm. it takes two to tango. So if they're saying negative things about someone, um, I don't know. Like it could be reflective of something, a behavior pattern that they have. Got mm-hmm. it. So I that, generally do think the same too. Like yeah. when someone mentions something about someone else, I will I will see it as a bit of as a bit of a red flag. I'm like, oh, like you don't know the other person's situation. Yeah, and I'll kind of like take it with a grain of salt. But I don't know. I just hope I'm not on the side where someone's saying that I'm a crazy ex. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, like that's actually <laughs> that's possible. That's definitely like an insult. Am I? <laughs> yeah. So we kind of talked about red flags. Let's move on to deal breakers. Mm-hmm. You both have personal deal breakers that you're like. These are my non-negotiables. Yes. Um, I do have three, top of mind. Um, The first one I think is my top, top, top in terms of deal breaker is if someone were to show physical aggression or just be Mm. like abusive. Oh, of course, yeah. That is 100% a deal breaker. One, because I know I, I should be treated better. And I think anyone out there who is in an abusive relationship deserves to be treated better. So that is number one. But Two, and this is mainly the point that I've always thought about, like throughout all of my relationships, is that like if we were to progress our relationship to the point of having kids one day, kids will push you to your limits, mm. right? They they can be mean, maybe even intentionally mean, but they don't even understand what the repercussions are or what their boundaries are, right? So imagine putting a kid with someone who likes to exert dominance and aggression mm. towards someone who's more vulnerable than them. Like that is just a mixture of terrible things to happen. So yeah. I've always thought just mm. to myself even as like I was younger I was like I would never date someone who is if there is yeah. any level of like physical aggression like I'm out mm-hmm. that is yeah, for sure yeah, number yeah. one for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. number two I would say is disloyalty I am a one man type of woman mm-hmm. and my man better be a one woman type of man mm-hmm. <laughs> one woman type of guy man yes I think in the current dating culture a lot of times people are dating many people at the same time which mm-hmm. I think is okay right that's just how it is nowadays but if we were to say DTR and make the relationship exclusive, the moment we are boyfriend and girlfriend, I expect the loyalty status to go from zero to a hundred, mm. like a hundred, as if we were married, as if it's like steel fortified. We are never going to be disloyal to each other because I do think trust is the cornerstone of any healthy relationship. So if that is lacking, then I, I cannot be in a relationship like that. And then thirdly, uh, a deal breaker for me is someone who's a couch potato. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you ladies know me well enough to probably be like, mm. I could see this one. Mm. Um, but anyone who's not on the same wavelength as me in terms of like passions, um, just personality and my day to day, it I find that would be really difficult if someone were to come home. And I know a lot of people do do this. It would just be a deal breaker for me, maybe mm-hmm. not for someone else. But if someone were to come home after a day of work and they just sit there and you know, they're not lifting a finger to help around the house or, mm-hmm. you know, checking on me or whatever it is. And they're just like, I'm just going to be a couch potato the rest of the night. Like, I don't think I could be with someone like that. Mm. So. Have there have you been in relationships where that came up? I have not been. I don't think I allow it to get there. Yeah. Mm. But that, so there were people that you, maybe there was a bit of attraction, but then you saw that and you're like, mm. Mm. 
I don't think I ever have. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Or there are other be- behaviors or signals that might, like before getting to the point of figuring out oh, something's a couch potato, um, you know, I like how do you figure out a couch would potato, do, but more of like a lifestyle mm, that I could yeah, tell yeah. was probably not aligned with mine. Mm. And maybe that's like, a certain level of cleanliness or just mm. taking care of their home type mm. of feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just felt so different from who they presented in the real life. Oh. Kind of like going, let's go home. Like, you know, come over to my place. And yeah, I come over, yeah. I'm like, mm, maybe we shouldn't have come <laughs> over to your place. Maybe we should have cleaned up a little bit, you know? Um, but it was like worse than, you know, what you're probably envisioning. It was it was, it was, was pretty bad. Um, so that that kind of took me aback. And I, mm. I thought to myself, like, okay, I can't see myself with this mm. type of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah. These are good ones. Yeah. When we started ABG back in 2017, we thought it would just be a podcast. That's it. There's no big lofty dreams of making this a full-time job or a small media company. But here we are in 2024 doing just that. Do you know what first step we took to go from just a podcast to something more? It was starting our online shop, and it began with just a t-shirt. When launching the shop, it was a no-brainer for us, and we went with Shopify. All of our entrepreneur friends, our friends who sold anything, sold on Shopify. Shopify is a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling printed designs or clothing, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. For us, we're able to sell to listeners in SF all the way to London. Shopify has been there for us in every other evolution of ABG. From that one t-shirt, the mantra tee, to staple collections like our cruel, cool summer line, we plan on sticking with them as we continue to grow and potentially test out new products. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash ABG, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash ABG now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash ABG. What are, what are some of yours? You know, oddly, I'm like struggling with this question because I feel like it's been a while since I revisited this Mm -hmm. topic. But Mm -hmm. after you said physical abuse, I did, or after you mentioned aggression, Mm -hmm. I thought about verbal aggression too. Mm -hmm. I I definitely been in situations before when I, when you're dating someone, you got for a drink and obviously your partner gets a little drunk and then they act really, like they just act very different. Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling really anxious in those moments. Uh. And when I saw that behavior, I was like, oof, like I let it, it was a red flag at first, but it came to a point where it was a deal breaker because we would have explosive fights. And I was like, Mm. why am I dealing, why are we fighting when we're drunk? Like this shouldn't be happening. And it just gets kind of like, you don't feel like you're talking to someone who's really coherent Mm because they're drunk. So Mm -hmm. I think verbal, like aggression, that kind of stuff, I'm just not, I'm a firm no. Yeah. Um, I feel like for that, for me, usually I understand just like sometimes it's human nature to need to let out some sort of like aggression Mm -hmm. but if it's consistent and it gets to a point where it's like always happening and it's always just each person berating each other and saying really not nice things and clearly not having any boundaries or holding back that's when it gets to be more of a deal breaker situation yeah i think it's more like the repeat offender versus like one off i'm okay i'm like i let it go but for me i was like oh this is like i noticed that issues get there's always happening when we're drinking i don't like this Mm, so that's one like when they're mean it's just like "Mm." it's like why Mm. Mm -hmm. and i think for me at the time there are moments when like the person will be drinking and i'd be sober and i'll be with my other friends and then a text would come in i'm just like what is like what's happening right now mm-hmm. i get like really con- or there a text from them where they're showing aggressiveness or just or kind just- of like yeah aggression or like more and i don't want to go too deep into this but mm-hmm. there's there's certain situation where i'm like i felt aggression but there's certain times i feel like you're just bringing up st- like problems when i'm like we're not like i'm not with you to kind of like problem oh solve. like why are you why are you bringing up issues, issues right now when yeah. i'm not with you but you only bring it up because you're drunk yeah mm-hmm. so you're somehow thinking about it and you're having a fight kind of with yourself in your head kind of i'm just like <laughs> messaging me yeah, yeah but yeah yeah, maybe it is like, I don't want to say it's just verbal aggression is one thing, but it's just also just like, I think just contention yeah. mm. or like, I think it's a level of maturity and level headedness to deal with conflict, but you have to do yeah, it in a certain yeah. way. So maybe yeah. it's just like, a, it's kind of like a subcategory of that, I guess. Yeah. Well, we all know that Ray is Ray's not. So you're you're the hot headed one in that relationship. I am, but. <laughs> but you know, I don't think you yell. We don't. And also we don't, we don't drink like, we don't do that yeah. kind of stuff. Um. I'm a mild-headed person, I'll say. <laughs> um, the second thing that I'm, I'm trying to di- differentiate if it's like a deal breaker or a deal or a red flag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> funny, I talked to my mom about this. I'm a foodie. I mm-hmm, love food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could date someone who's not into food. Like mm-hmm. people who just say, That's oh, I just eat yeah. for sustenance. 
I'm just like, yeah, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I understand. Wait, I actually have a question because Ray is kind of very functional with his. Ray, on the, uh, here's the thing. I think we both are aligned where since like on the weekday, yeah, we'll eat. But he cooks delicious healthy food. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's the same thing, but it's so, it's so good. Mm-hmm. But on the weekends, we go crazy. Chongqing mm-hmm. Noodle House. Yeah. Ah, that's your jam. Yeah, that's your so it's like, yeah, yeah. I think it's just more like, if that's 24-7, I'm a no. But if you can enjoy if we were on vacation, like we both love looking for restaurants and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if someone that doesn't enjoy food or takes that initiative and, and has that like excitement, excitement around it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a no mm-hmm. for me. Because mm-hmm. my family's like that mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Have you ever dated someone like that? No. Mm. I've always searched for a foodie. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's just I've always searched for a non couch potato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I never really read into that. Like they all like yeah. Food is always on my list. Yeah, but yeah. besides that, like the other non – like the deal breakers I think maybe are kind of like maybe more obvious now than it were before. It's like mm-hmm. they have to get along with my friends or yeah. make – sorry, oh, make an sure. effort with my friends. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, that's, that's a tough one. one. I will but, say that's a tough one. Deal breaker for you? I think so because I dated someone – that didn't make an effort and literally yeah. said to me, I don't care. Yeah. And I was like, what? Oh, mm-hmm. I see mm-hmm. And so for me, it's like, well, you have zero lack of uh, thought from my, from me and my friends because yeah. I value mm-hmm. my friendships. Because if I'm putting an effort to get to know your friends, I expect the same. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't think it's a matter of like you being introvert and extrovert. It's just a matter of effort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's I how agree. I see yeah. it as. Yeah, I agree yeah. with so that. So that's probably like a deal breaker, I'll say. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what what is making you think i'm just i'm just thinking <laughs> well it's also because i remember I'm, the reason i bring this up is because i remember in the past helen has mentioned like you said to me before you and Trevor were like oh like my last well you said i used to go away which is true yeah yeah yeah. And i think i did feel like the last few years I've, we got closer with our friend right. group but, but you continued dating that person so in that at, during that yeah. relationship you're like oh this is just a red flag but now you're like this is a deal breaker. i think so and also yeah. maybe because mm-hmm. the way i talk with ray we and i have conversations about friendship and what it means to us and he literally said he goes you have to put an effort with friendships. Like I agree. It, it's a thing. So I think that he's expressed value mm-hmm. in that. I also see it too. Now we mm-hmm. both understand like this is something, this is something we're just have to, we're going to yeah. put more effort in. Now I have a question for you. If you notice these deal, deal breakers in say my relationship or Janice's relationship, would you say something? I would say like, do you value this? Mm-hmm. Like, do you guys value this? Because if you guys don't value as much <laughs> as I do, that's not my, that, then I'm projecting myself. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's hard. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because I value that. I want my partner to do that. Mm-hmm. But, but if, you would mention this to friends. What do you like, mean? You, you, would say, you would ask a friend this. Like if you, if you saw, for example, if Janet started dating someone, but mm-hmm. like he didn't really hang out with us a lot. Yeah. Would you say something to Janet? I would. Mm-hmm. I, I would ask Janet, do you, do you value, like do you want your partner to feel in, like be part of it? Or does he feel, is there a reason why he feels not included? Because there's something mm-hmm. we can do as a mm-hmm. friend group to make them feel welcomed. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if that dynamic, if let's just say, maybe that just, a partner she chooses doesn't get along with us in a certain way then i can't i can't i can't yeah. be like dude get along with us it's yeah. just not i would agree with that yeah. i would agree with that answer okay janet do you have yeah, any what's other your, uh, as a person entering the so dating world the very first thing that both of you ladies pointed to was this like sense of aggression or whether that's like physical or verbal or and that was like number one on my list yeah. too is like and and i was trying to break it down i'm like is it i don't think i've ever dated anyone who is like ever physically aggressive but people can get impassioned about things right mm. And um, if ever if ever I feel like uncomfortable, like when Melvin, you said if I start to get anxious, mm. that's how I kind of like gauge. Yeah, yeah. But mm. I think any type of like super aggressive behavior um, or very controlling. Mm. Uh, if you are someone who is like kind of more dominant, and um, yeah, dominant and controlling, I I I feel like. That's hard for me to yeah. to go with. Yeah, I think we talked about this before. I think I shared experience with Janet where I was saying like, I think when someone, I get it, when people are angry or confrontational, they start raising their voice where I feel like they're yelling at me, I mm. automatically shut down. I think you yes. related to that. Yeah. So I think it just doesn't work it's, for... And the thing is, it's not necessarily like aggression can be shown in many ways, right? Yeah. You don't have to be like throwing shit across the room, yeah. but it's like if you're getting worked up and it's and you're, I can tell you are like really intense yeah. and I'm getting like, whoa, I don't see where this is coming from mm-hmm. um, or like... I want to let you have your space to do that. But if like, if I feel, if I feel in the midst of your like, uh, yeah. and, and it's like a little unpredictable, then it gets me, um, I kind of more shut down mm-hmm. and, and it's, I, I, I don't know how to like kind of be yeah. and interact in that environment. Mm-hmm. So that was my number one. My number two is, um, I guess I, I, I'm thinking about it in a different way than like the couch potato, but it's somebody mm. who is um, like your dreaming to action ratio 
is Ooh, lower or like, no, your action to dream ratio is high. So I love people who are like ambitious and like think big or like they're like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And then how much I want to see how much action is happening mm-hmm. in relation to those things that you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, it's like, I was trying to think about it as well. Like, is it that I want someone who's like busy all the time and doing things? Not necessarily, but I think I want you to, I would, I value you having like somewhat of a goal Mm. or like multiple goals and then progressing toward them. Like I want to see action happening in some format. And it doesn't have to be 24 seven. Like people go through different periods or whatever, but I like to see, I like to see um, somewhat of a focus and progress towards that focus. Mm -hmm. And then my third deal breaker um, is someone who absolutely does not want kids. And this is like That's a family. A pl- and and I know now. this is a big yeah. topic that is probably very prevalent among our generation. And especially as people are getting into their like 30s and 40s and they're thinking about children. I personally have friends who have made the decision that they don't want children. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying I need kids, but I don't want to be with someone who absolutely is like, no, mm-hmm. they don't want that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would be kind of like mm-hmm. my That's top a good three. one. Question mm-hmm. for, are you on the dating apps again? I am not. Okay. okay. <laughs> but if you were to be, yeah. now that you are where you are in your life and you do want a serious relationship it's kind of like i i would think that it's like no games now right Mm -hmm. when you're on back on the dating app would you put these deal breakers onto your dating profile so i'm gonna be honest i don't i i as of right now don't plan to go back on the dating apps Mm -hmm. um i am i think i'm moving towards my direction of trying to meet people naturally and then maybe i will work with like um a matchmaker type person Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but I don't know. That yeah. might change, you know, as the year progresses. For But for the moment, I just, I feel like my experiences on dating apps is because it has to be kind of more, you have to be a little bit more like linear process around it. And I just yeah. don't think there is, mm. um, I think, I think if you put things, if you're too direct, you might be attracting a certain type of person that it's hard to get. I, you, I just, I need, I need more. More organic interactions? Yeah, yeah more yeah, organic interactions. Sense. But it seems like even if you work with a matchmaker, you are they're like, okay, they're going to ask you, what are your deal breakers? So these yeah, are the things you yeah. express to them, right? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it was I, like aggression is challenging. Someone who is um, like has ambition and works towards things and then at least is open to the idea of children or at least yeah. not. Can, yeah. yeah. So those are those are three that. Nice. Um, yeah. I guess hypothetically, if I was on a dating app, maybe I would put those things. I don't know about you, but it feels like a lot of my friends are now getting on that baby train. If you have a friend who is also expecting or have little ones still in diapers, I always recommend Pampers Swaddlers. With Pampers Swaddlers, you can also rest assured that this diaper will prevent up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. Swaddlers has dual leak guard barriers at the legs to help protect where leaks happen most. And they have a blowout barrier, which is an innovative back pocket built into the diaper to help prevent those messy leaks up the back. Did you know that on average, babies will use up to 8,000 plus diapers before for becoming potty trained, that is a lot. That's why Pampers Diaper Stash is the hottest baby gift for 2024. So give a gift to a loved one that says, we see you and we've got you. Pampers Diaper Stash is an online diaper fund that all parents with little ones will love. You can organize friends and family to contribute to a group gift of an online stockpile that never has to run out. Pampers Diaper Stash is great because it takes the guesswork out of choosing what size and how many diapers to gift. It's so easy to do and it's the gift that always fits. So you've talked a lot about like characteristics or things to look for in terms of um, red flags and also like deal breakers. But what about like the actual meeting of a first date? What are places that you think would be ideal for a first date? And what are like absolute no's? I'm gonna go with no's first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, movie theater. Funny. Mm. I used to say yes. This is like your ideal first date in high school, right? Yeah. Which I totally went on. Um, but I think now as we are trying to get to know someone. I think movie a movie theater is hard unless you like schedule something before. And the second one is a wedding. Oh. Oh, It yeah. was on the list. No, no, no. It was on the list. Also, I have a friend who's like very spontaneous, mm-hmm. Was got invited on a second date to a wedding. I was like, no. I was a firm no. I think maybe by third? Really? Maybe by so here's, third. Here's where I could see a wedding being interesting because you get a, you get, it's for the person who is attend, like being invited on the date, I get to meet all your friends and me. I get, I get an open book to like evaluate you, see how you are and make certain like, yeah. Pull certain, you know. I think for me, I place a lot of value on a wedding. Like the celebration is something so significant mm-hmm. that I wouldn't even give you a plus one if you're bringing someone you just met. Yeah. That's a rule. Oh, that. you're thinking of as the as the person hosting the wedding. But if you were being invited to a wedding as a first date. True, but I, 
I, I would probably I, not go. I, I would, if it's the first date. I would and not go. second date, even if the first date was really good, I think second date, I'm no. like, I want to get to know you a little bit more. And then you're probably texting mm. in between and really getting to know this mm. person. By the third date, I could see it being like a, okay, last minute. Maybe this person doesn't really know anyone there and it's just like, I'm insignificant in this mm, wedding mm-hmm, Then mm-hmm. and I have a plus one, then I would go. But if they're like part of the groomsmen, yeah, yeah. like they're in it, it's their yeah. family member, I'd be like, no, I, I'm not going to this with you. Mm, yeah, Because I would actually feel pressure too as like the plus one. I'm like, oof. Yeah, because yeah. then you have to show mm. up as like, oh, I'm the new girl? Friend? Girlfriend? Yeah. So it depends on, I think it depends on the role of the person. But I think yeah. overall, wedding is a no for me. Mm-hmm. The obvious yes is just a coffee shop. It's a coffee. It's just, Would you I, rather do coffee or bar? Now, coffee, because I don't like to drink anymore. Oh, bold mm. statement. As much. Mm. But, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was missing that. All right, how about you two? Well, I'm playing off of the coffee or bar. I would also say coffee. And I've been saying, but less because of the beverage, more of the setting and the time of day. Oh. Most likely, you're going to be getting coffee or tea during the day. Mm-hmm. And I kind of want to see how someone is during the day versus mm. at night. Um, and then probably progressively second third date then let's go out for drinks mm-hmm. how about nose oh, wait sorry you didn't ask me this question coffee or bar 100 oh, percent bar oh you wanted the question <laughs> thrown at you i was gonna, I was gonna answer no, the no, overall no. i was just gonna say bar too i can't i no, can't see I, I'm coffee shop like no, no no actually no i want to know why yeah because it is brightly lit there are people working usually like at a cafe oh. you're like talking and maybe you find a corner sure but there your your voice will travel oh, right true, and true, so true. i'd rather be in an intimate bar setting where like oh let's feel tucked away and it's just like a private moment oh. for just us two you know, that's why I would say bar. Actually, you know, it's funny. There's one time Helen was working at a boba shop and she was like, oh my God, these people are on a date right now. And you overheard their whole conversation. I did. I'm like, did he just said this? Yeah. And like, I don't want people listening yeah, into yeah, my yeah. conversation. Yeah. Ah. So that's that's why I would. And I, I also feel like like seeing how they handle their alcohol and like how they are around mm-hmm. that is also something that is pretty telling too of like the type of relationship you might be getting into. So I don't know. Bar for sure for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, going back to the other question of like, you guys said ideal so i think i think bar coffee coffee mm. what are your no's i said a wedding and a movie theater okay i have a few um a zoo <laughs> <laughs> i feel i am not a zoo girl i feel like every time i go to a zoo it is hot and i feel like 75 percent of the time you're looking for like a butt <laughs> of an <laughs> animal and then you have like all these butts on your phone and you're like what am i doing all these butts of animals on my phone and you barely see any animals so i'm not a zoo girl <laughs> your first wait you look for butts of animals at the no, zoo no, i'm saying you're looking for the animal but they're always hiding oh you can okay. barely see them half I see, the time it's like empty ah. you're for sure not a zoo girl i am not a zoo girl Sorry. i love animals but i just don't like zoos no mm. yeah let them free another note for me would be a buffet <laughs> oh i'm curious why because i'm the type of person that likes to nibble i like to sample everything so i'm like in the zone when i go to a buffet versus like oh i have one plate to focus on mm. i want to like get up i want to see everything i want to fill my plate up i want two plates and i don't want someone to judge me and i want to be able to uh. unbutton my pants and just like let it flop out you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> oh my gosh is it is it I mean, but wouldn't if you did on the first date and then they they accept you? I I might be more focused on the food than the conversation. Got it, got it. Ah, okay. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Wow, I actually would be down for a buffet for a really? first date. Really, I think it'd be really? fun to be like, oh, what did you get in your plate? Okay, I guess that would mm. be fun. But it then depends. you're like, also, I can't go to a buffet and not eat. I'm gonna eat. Yeah, then you should. But I feel like like to point of discomfort. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I say, say, that's what I allow. You're, you're that. like focused on that goal versus the goal of like getting yes. to know the person. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I want to try everything. So yeah, that'd be a no. So to be honest, when it comes to first dates, like I don't, I'm not opposed. I'm pretty open to like almost any setting or thing. Mm. But the one thing that I would like to avoid, I don't want to drive super far Mm -hmm. to meet someone for the first time. That's Mm. the biggest thing is the investment Mm. of like time and transportation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But but in terms of setting of like where we are, what we were meeting up with, what we're doing, like I kind of I I I feel like any situation I could turn into a thing where it's like. I'll either have a good time, I'll get some information about you. I know the wedding sounds like a weird thing, but if someone were to give the invite, like I don't know what context of their friends and their relationships are. If they have an invite and they give it to me, then I'll take it as an opportunity to go and meet some other people, um, mm. get to like get a get an understanding of who they are as a person, maybe how they interact in these types of settings, that kind of a thing. You, so. You'd go on a first date, not a okay, yeah, maybe maybe a. Uh, Actually, if it was convenient, Janet Janet. If, it was con- oh, if it was convenient and it was like, hey, I'm going to this. But I also would ask questions like what kind of wedding or what is the setting? Because yeah. like what if it was like they're 
grad school friend who is just inviting like all these people. They're hosting this large party and they they're like they're flexible. It's a plus one or whatever. And I, I would I would hopefully trust the person that they're gonna if they extended the invite to me then mm-hmm. like okay. the whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think the bad thing about that is that you're kind of stuck. You know, like you have to go oh. through the whole ceremony. You have to go through whatever you could tell right off the bat. You're like, oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> like in a coffee shop setting. Oh, my hour meter. Yeah, is yeah. No, that is that is oh, a very good point. I think because I would already go into that knowing like um, I, I'm not intending for this to be like you'll be talking to other people by the end of the night. Maybe or <laughs> or I'm just there and it's like if this is if this is not going to work out then I'll I'll once again I enjoy the event for what it is and yeah, then we can have yeah. the conversation after the date. Yeah. That should be the to, question in YouTube like would you go on a wedding for a first oh date? Man. Please yeah. comment. Yes, let us know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, just quickly some of my yeses. Beach. I'm not a zoo girly, but I'm a beach girly. Not in the sense of like, hey, let's lie half naked and like casually, you know, catch glimpses of each other's bodies. Not that. Mm. I would love to just ride a bike along, you know, the little trail. Mm. That's nice. That's nice. And then go to like a shack and get something nice. Like that would be my ideal oh. date, actually. If someone were to propose yeah, yeah. that, it'd be like, damn, in the bag. Um, another one is, y'all, Cheesecake Factory. I know. I that saw was th- a big thing. Yeah. I saw that TikTok thing and I was like, if she didn't get out of the car, I was like, I would run out the car. <laughs> I, I love the cheesecake back. Cheese, it's not, and it's not cheap. It's not cheap. That's like $22 for chicken Bellagio. Yeah, oh my gosh. The, the uh, oh, I can never say this word, but the- for folly. <laughs> Oh, I can't say either. For lolly. <laughs> for lolly with the chicken and roasted garlic. Oh, so good. Or the pasta da Vinci. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm hungry now. Yeah. So cheesecake's on our list. Yeah. yeah. I think that girl, she was more like, oh, this is like a chain restaurant, right? Girl, I don't care. Take yeah. an Olive yeah. Garden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's a that's a maybe for me. <laughs> Yo, Olive Garden's good. It is good. I, I just haven't it. had it in a while. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so those are some of the red flags, deal breakers. Let's move on to beige flags. Have you heard of beige flags before? Yes, but I couldn't really think of like some examples. Okay, so mm-hmm. just to let everyone out there know, this is a definition from Urban Dictionary, reputable source. It is... Something that's neither good nor bad, but makes you pause for a minute when you notice it, and then you just continue on. It's just something odd, mm. right? So here's just some examples from Pop Sugar. If they give random items pronouns, such as "she's looking good," but referring to a car, hmm. <laughs> that's so random. That's so random. <laughs> if they continue to wear underwear or clothes that have holes in them, not a beige flag. Let me just say that. Not, for me. <laughs> not for me either. <laughs> I mean, it just shows that they're frugal and resourceful. You know? <laughs> How about no underwear? Uh, whoa. <laughs> oh. That could be a green flag for some people. Oh. <laughs> if they will not plan ahead or worse, they will not plan anything at all. That's mm. a, that's actually a red flag for me, not a beige flag. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How How is that a beige flag? Maybe some people are like, oh, they're spontaneous. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Agreed. Red flag for me, too. If they love popping pimples, not a red flag. Not a red flag. I love popping pimples. Is that beige? We shouldn't. That's beige, right? Mm, no, it'd just be like normal. Normal. Okay. Mm. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really have an opinion about it. <laughs> I'm <guess I'm> like, <laughs> neutral. You do you. If you want to pop those pimples, that's okay. Yeah. All right. Those are not beige flags for us then. Do you know, are there any other beige flags you can think of? I think something that would attract my attention that I might fixate on and try to like mention is if someone chews really loudly. Mm. I'd be like, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Not a red flag, but it's like a little bit of an annoyance. Kind of like yeah, a yeah. Mm, beige. Yeah. Okay, I haven't really... Mm, this is... Never mind. I'll take it back. Girl, no, no, no. Take, say take it. it there. Take it I've there. seen... Okay, this is not with partners, but maybe with friends. And then mm. I asked myself if my... It's like, I've got... Ooh, I feel bad. I have, certain, <laughs> I have certain guy friends that have really, really long armpit hair. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know... I, I think to myself, like, if my boyfriend had that long armpit hair, would I say something? I probably uh, would. Uh-huh. Ray's really well-groomed. But I, but <laughs> yeah. I was just like... Mm-hmm. Huh. You know, Wait, is it is it more that it doesn't look good? It's kind of like you know like when like I'm wearing a tank top. I've and- never noticed any of our guy okay. friends with long. Yeah, but neither just- have I. But now I'm gonna look. Yeah, now I'm gonna. But look. I'm just saying like it's just it's long when you're wearing a tank top and things are like popping out. Oh, I see it. Kinda, Ooh, kinda I see, I see. Like, like mm. a bush underneath your armpit. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we've been focusing a lot on red flags, on deal breakers, beige flags. But probably the most important thing is to know what your green flags are. Yeah. Like, what are the things we should be looking for? Maybe what? I should have worn green today instead of this oh, bright ass oh, red. Oh, I just noticed. We got a green flag. Dude, red, green, beige. beige. <gasps> that was <laughs> not the red flag here. <laughs> Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> I wore this because love. <laughs> but I'm the red flag. But yeah, what what are some of your green flags? A couple. 
I think when a person is really upfront with their feelings and their intention with you, mm. I love it because they're just so transparent and um, it just it makes everything easier when you're dating someone. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing that I actually got from Ray is when people and mutual friends go up to me and say, he's a really good person. He's a really good guy. Mm. It's like people who vouch for his character. Exactly. Yeah. Because I, to be honest, I haven't dated that before. Mm-hmm. I got warned. Oh shit, you've gotten warned? I got warned by guys Damn. I dated in the past. So Damn. dating Ray was the first time multiple people have said he's a really nice person. Mm, that's Damn. a really so good So I'm just one. like, I like that. well, yeah. That's true, that's true. So those are mine. Um, I have three. So obviously opposite of my red flags, right? Those are green flags. But also number one for me is to have someone who is an equal partner. Mm-hmm. Like someone who exhibits that early on. I'm not sure how you would exhibit early on, but I guess just now because I haven't dated in a long time, the way I think about my green flags is with my partner and it's someone who is taking on like equal Mm. i say equal in quotes because sometimes it doesn't feel equal or it's equal in the sense of like what you're contributing to the relationship and both agreeing on right Mm. and i know a lot of people who is in sort of this relationship where the gender stereotypes the super Mm. outdated ones where it's like oh the the wife is always doing the laundry always i understand that that is a dynamic that is still continuous to this day Mm. but since like day one I've always been like I need someone who is an equal partner Mm. and it's funny because it's hard to see that when you first date someone Mm. but I think over time that is something that I've like made sure that like Philip had for me Mm. before we even like got engaged or married it was Mm. something that was necessary my second one would be someone who is just my ultimate cheerleader so whenever Mm. I feel down or sad it's someone who believes in me more than I believe in myself and will always be there to support me to ground me to like be my rock Mm. that is super green flag definitely something that in all of my relationships I've I've looked for someone who is just believes in me more than believe myself lastly it is someone who feels like he can just be my best friend Mm. like it's effortless even if we are you know traveling we're far away from home we're like stuck in a cave somewhere we're lost in some city it's like this person still feels like home in a Mm. super foreign country Mm. someone who is just my home away from home that is that has always been something i've looked for too and definitely didn't have like in my earlier relationships Mm. you know but um green flag for sure Mm. that feeling of comfort Mm. that's a good one yeah my first Biggest, biggest green flag that I look for is kindness. Um, I don't know. I'm just really drawn to that, to kindness. And then um, secondly, I would say somebody who has a good relationship with their parents. Mm -hmm. Um, And good is such a – I mean, good is a complicated word, right? But more like that they have a close relationship with their parents. Um, And part of that is because I have a close relationship with my parents. And so having somebody who would understand that Mm -hmm. and understand that as a priority is very valuable to me. Mm Another green flag would be if I feel comfortable around your friends and they feel like they could be my friends. I think mm. that's like another – that's another green flag. Um, and then the last one I would say is just somebody who um, is not afraid to take care of their partner. And maybe it first shows the like inquisitiveness to ask you like how do you like being taken care of? Mm. And then and then um, we'll actually deliver on those things. Yeah. To follow through. It's yeah. really important. Great green flags. Well, we went through a couple of different flags today from red, green, beige. Man, I don't like being the red here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now she's oh, white now. <laughs> Where's the white flag? From deal breakers to deal makers. You kind of covered a lot in today's episode. I'm sure we could even go deeper on some of these like s- specific flags and categories. Yeah. But we're curious. Please let us know your red beige and green flags in the comments below and thank you again for joining us for another episode of abg and with that we'll catch you on the next episode bye Bye.